Hey guys, just got another quick video here uh, of a few items here I thought I would cover that I, I would have found useful uh, pre-purchase had I known about and maybe even post-purchase to some degree. Um, a few things here, just some quick hits. Uh, first of all, people were having trouble figuring out how to get the tire pressure display in the car. In fact, I was pretty convinced for a while that it wasn't possible with the 12.3 inch multi-information display. Um, like it used to be with the old seven inch and that's because it's just really opaque how to control this thing So I'm gonna quickly show you how this works. So you see how I'm hitting left and right here on these Buttons on the steering wheel on the left. Well, what that does is it changes between three different presets um, For the dial displays Now there's more options than this you can actually have two dials um, If you go into watch this if I if I hit Okay, and I hold it and it gives me this little guy here, these little lines appear, which indicates that I can actually scroll up and down and choose different things. See this, there's messages from the car. There's, that's the little road display up there. And this is like nothing. And then there's that road display there, which shows you your lane guidance and whether or not it detects the lanes on the sides. And you've got your settings. And if you hit okay to get into settings, then you've got a, a plethora of other options here. These are mostly safety options on this menu. Actually, they all are. That's lane trace assist. You can hold okay to get into settings for that. Uh, it gives you, and look at this, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. It shows you how you can alert um, if you want to do, you know, see, did you hear that? That's the vibration, or you can do sound sensitivity, how sensitive it is to lane uh, lane uh, departures, and then your sway warning, which is like if you go back and forth, and how sensitive that is. So pretty cool. Uh, you know, that's just one of them. Here you can hold this, you can turn it on and off, and you can do sensitivity and brightness for the blind spot monitor on the mirrors. That's what that is there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Again, lots of options here if you know how to do it. Hold OK on this. That's the uh, uh, the pedestrian collision system. Um, I guess it's or the pre-collision system. Sorry about that. I should know this uh, by now. But anyway, the sensitivity is adjustable and whether or not you want it on and off. Again, you can just uh, switch it on and off entirely. Of course, these reset, I believe, every time you turn the car on to on. So they are on by default. Uh, that's the rear cross traffic alert. Uh, which is uh, whether or not you've got people coming behind you while you're backing up. That's a very useful thing. I've got the volume on the highest, so I really like to know. And then the road sign assist, again, which is what detects, um, you know, stop signs, speed limit signs, things of that nature. You can have it notify you with either um, sound or visual. Uh, I tried sound and audio, and it's really super annoying, actually. The sound is. In fact, it, it like, interrupts what you're listening to. And uh, the other problem is you can only... Um, check this out like you can actually where's the option for notification level look five miles per hour is the highest up you can go you can't go like 10 like you can on like the Acura Integra has 10 as an option I think the Hondas do maybe too um five is the highest you can go so what you get is you get a little red sign up here in the corner uh when it detects a road sign it turns red um if you go over five miles per hour above the sign I thought it'd be nice to have a little bing or something like that when I hit five miles per hour over uh, but the problem is it does it every single time you hit five miles per hour over, which is a lot. So anyway, back into settings here. So you hold it, go back into settings. And then on the next stuff here, everybody's seen this probably too, but you have vehicle settings, which you can hold again to get into. And there's charging settings and you can push OK and you can set the schedule on here. You can do whether you want the connector to lock, auto lock and unlock. I've got that on so it unlocks automatically when I'm finished. Or you can just turn it off entirely so it doesn't lock at all. Whether you want the battery cooler and heater to work, I have no idea why you would turn those off because it's for the health of the battery. Uh, what charging current you'd like to enable. So if you have a, a like a, a, an outlet that's 15 amp, which I actually do, in fact, and you want to make sure you don't blow a fuse, you can actually do 8 amp and just limit it to that. Of course, your charging will take even longer. I think it's 16 hours if you go that route. And then you can set the charging schedule. I don't actually use this. I use this guy to do it, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, and then beyond that, you also have... This dynamic radar cruise control, which technically is also part of the safety system, you can control how much curb speed reduction you want it to employ. So I actually have mine turned down a little bit because I found it was quite a lot of reduction. Um, but I do think that feature is neat. Um, let's see here. Sorry, I just got a text. And then this is the uh, the rear uh, door, the uh, powered door in the back. So you can actually do uh, how much you want it to open. You can see I've got it up there on five. You can adjust this to different levels of, I mean, it's pretty cool. So anyway, I left it alone. Um, you can also change the volume to how much it alerts when it opens. Um, this is tire pressure warning system. Don't mess with this. I almost did and screwed something up. You probably don't need to unless you've done something with your tires. Um, scheduled maintenance, you know, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, and the rear seat reminder, which is when you, you know, have the rear seat doors opened, the rear doors opened. Um, 
when you unlock and get out of the car, it reminds you to check the rear seat to make sure you haven't left one of your kids in there or something like that. So, um, and then the last thing is meter settings. So again, you hold okay again to get into that. You have to hold it. Um, and that will give you, you know, language units, whether you want to do miles or kilometers, etc. cetera. Um, meter type, which is this whole thing. You can change how you want it to look. There's obviously different types. You've seen this probably before. Um, again, you can turn your widget on and off. It's pretty cool. I like the widget on. I don't. Well, that's these guys right here. These things about watches. Watch. I'll show you. Hang on. Wait a second. Sorry. So you go back into this. Widget off turns those off. See. And widget on turns them back on. So I don't know why you'd want them off. I mean, I guess if you think it's too busy. Um, and then the dual meter style, which I actually originally assumed was probably the best, but in fact, I think there are better options for this style, which I quite like. And who needs a tachometer anyway? Let's be honest. This thing doesn't have a real transmission. Um, so what I've got set up here, see these things on the side, this is actually not my default, but there's the tire pressures by the way. So it's possible. See, um, I'll come back to that in just a second. So, um, meter style is just the skinning here. Okay. So that just gives you different looks. And again, I know you've all probably seen this as well in various videos, but there's the different options. I kind of like tough. I don't know if I'd call myself a tough guy, but that's what I like. Um, dial type. I mean, look at all this stuff. Do whether you want the speedometer or the hybrid system. I don't know why you want that. Again, it's nice to know your speed with a little dial. I think that's cool. Um, EV indicator on or off. That's this guy right here. Um, fuel economy. You can do whether you want the trip average or the total average. Hybrid system. You could do whether you want eco guidance, which is um, actually I think that only works when you're driving. Um, and then all the rest of these things. Look at all this stuff. You can change how you want all these things. Configure. There are a lot of options. Uh, most of these, most people do not need to even mess with. Um, so anyway, trip A, trip B. Whether you want things to pop up, look at this. Whether you want it to show you these things when something changes, like if you change the volume, um, if there's something related to uh, the phone or turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Yeah, I want all those things to come up, so I've left them on, um, and you can default it. I don't know what calendar does, by the way. Couldn't figure this out, and it doesn't do anything when I hold OK, so not sure what's up with that. Maybe I should read the manual again. Um, okay, so that's the demo here, but the reason I'm showing you this is, in fact, because it's more complicated than that. There are three levels of presets, which is what this is when I go left and right on this guy. Um, three levels of presets. There's one, two, and three. And you might notice that on the sides flanking this middle meter display, these widgets are changing over here. Actually, they're technically not called widgets. They're just displays. The widgets are those little guys underneath it. But... Uh, this is my number one screen preset. And what you do is you hold OK, and then you get the lines, and then you hit right, and then it goes over here, or left, and it goes over here. And once you're on either side, you can further adjust by going up and down and choosing what you want the particular preset for that item to be. So if it's number one, you know, if you select number one and you go over here, it's going to change. So that stays a compass, and then it actually turns into, by the way, turn-by-turn -turn navigation from Android Auto, which is pretty cool, uh, and Apple CarPlay, I'm sure. Um, haven't tried it. I have an Android phone. Um, and then, uh, again, same thing with the left side. You can actually go and change what is displayed. See, I've got it on Drive Info currently, but you can do your trip B, trip A. You can do your, um, I believe that's uh, your power uh, like indicator, like where the power is coming from and going to, like you have on the other display. That's the tire pressures. Um, this is your all wheel drive display. It shows you which tires are doing what. Um, that's your total average fuel economy for the trip. There's your eco score, EV driving ratio, how much you've been driving in EV this particular trip. Again, Android auto. Um, and that's the, uh, that's the song. The song's awesome, by the way. Uh, <laughs> that's my music. Um, and anyway, so also if you go further left again, you hit left again, it takes you to this display and you can choose which ones of those things you want even selectable, which is pretty cool. And again, this is all based on each individual preset. So if you have one, two or three selected, these items change and are saved based on which one you've selected. So pretty cool. Um, I really like it. It is opaque. It is a little tricky to get used to. Once you get used to it though, I find it very nice. And then you can just hit left and right to cycle between the three displays you've got. So I've got one here with tires. This is when I'm like interested in tires traction, I guess. Um, I've got one here with uh, the Android Auto stuff over there and the uh, audio over there. And then I've got one here with Android Auto over here and the trip information over here. So, and I just find this very intuitive uh, and very nice to use once you get it set up. So I wanted to show you guys that because that's one of the big questions a lot of people have. Okay, let's go to the next thing I wanted to show everybody. And that is 
Um, so there's a lot of complaints about the Toyota app on the phones. I have an Android phone. I suspect it's not much better for iPhone from what I have heard. But I will mention that the app is pretty functional if you understand its limitations. Okay, so I was expecting the worst, like Apocalypse. And it wasn't nearly that bad. Okay, but one thing that is bad, is very bad, in fact, is... I'm, I'm having some trouble finding it here. Actually, I forgot. It's under this guy. It's under the car, not under the settings. Sorry. So the car gives you car-specific stuff. The charging schedule, which is very important to set, uh, is pretty much impossible to set on the Android app, I've discovered. In fact, if you try to do it on the Android app, it actually merges incorrectly with the settings on the car, as far as I can tell. I think it's just a programming error. I cannot imagine how they managed to do that. They need to like remake the app. But anyway, uh, set on here, it is actually really easy to do. Um, and it works perfectly. I have had no problem since I configured it on here. The first night I tried to set it with my phone and it didn't work. Like it didn't charge overnight. I was like, what the heck? So I went back on here and it worked great. So and I have not had a problem since. So what I did here is I have a departure time for this day, which by the way is Monday. Um, currently it's every day, but like, let's just say, you know, I went to Monday here, right? Hit Monday. I've got a departure time for 8 a.m. So that's when it's going to expect me to leave. It's going to climate prep 20 minutes before that. So it's going to start turning on uh, the heat or AC to whatever setting it was previously configured to. So if I had it on like 70 and I turned the car off, it's going to climate prep to 70 um, the 20 minutes before that. And it's going to repeat this every day. That's all that means. Um, a couple pitfalls here. You do have to have your climate system set in order for that to happen. So if you don't have this on, when you turn the car off, it will not climate prep. It will just, you know, skip that step. Um, the other thing is um, it only charges starting around the time it thinks it needs to start in order to get you fully charged when you're about to depart, which is good for the health of the battery. Although this thing only charges to about 90%. Everybody knows that and everybody knows it doesn't go below 30-ish percent. Um, so it's, it's probably going to last a while anyway based on that because lithium-ion batteries, I know from being a computer tech, um, do thrive in the range of 30 to 80 to 90-ish percent uh, charge and they, they're much healthier if you do not charge them beyond those parameters. So um, that's the next thing I wanted to show you guys. I just think that's a, a, um, a little tricky thing that some people are going to be pestered by if they don't realize that's how, uh, that's the best way to do it. So anyway, definitely use this thing to configure, uh, the charging schedule cause it's way better. And then the last thing I want to talk about today, or I think the last thing I want to talk about today is, uh, the charging pad. So a lot of people have struggled with this charging pad. I originally, in my first video, mentioned I didn't have any trouble with it. Well, I think it's because of the behavior of how I use it, because I did have trouble with it a couple times, and I figured out with my, with fortunately the one thing I'm good at in life, my diagnostic mindset, being a computer tech again, a tech consultant, um, I actually limited, uh, I figured out the variables that were causing it to misbehave, and that is actually pretty simple. If you turn the car on, it turns out, so I know there's been a, a cocktail of different suggestions here as to how to fix this. Like some people said you turn it off, back on, and it works. So you can do that, and you turn it on, listen to this. Do you hear the motor? I don't know if you can hear that on video. There's actually a motorized sensor in here. There are not a sensor, but a motorized charging coil that supposedly moves to the positioning of your phone um, when you set it on the pad. So it sounds like a cool feature, but the problem is it doesn't work very well in practice if, if you put the phone on there immediately when you get in the car. That's literally it. As far as I can tell, if you slap your phone into this thing, if you just throw it in there as soon as you get in the car and expect it to charge, it in fact will not charge in many cases. Why is that? I don't know. I'm not sure why that's the case. Um, all I know is the best, most reliable way I have found to make this thing work is to wait about 15 seconds after the car is in ready mode. You know, once you start driving or whatever, if you start to back up or whatever, then toss your phone in there and it will charge. And in fact, my phone moves around and my phone... Uh, you know, gets jostled or whatever when I go over bumps and it does not stop charging. So I have not had a problem with that uh, using that method. So I would suggest trying that if you've been having trouble with the charging pad. Um, I actually am quite happy with it now and I have not resorted back to using this charging cable that I paid $70 for in the port installed options that they made me buy with the car. Um, I don't want to talk about that. So anyway, that's just something I wanted to mention because I think it's going to help a lot of people who are struggling with these charging pads or who are worried about them. They're actually quite good. Um, I haven't tried it with my wife's phone, which she has a case, so it's possible it may not work as well. You know, obviously it doesn't make as good of charging contact with a case, but I can't imagine it would be that much worse. So um, that's basically it for today. Um, a couple parting thoughts again. Still really love this car. Have not really had any issues with anything so far. I did have one situation. I guess I'll mention this too as a little bonus. I had one situation where the screen did not turn on when I got in the car, which I, I quickly Googled, of course, and came across people talking about the same thing and they had the same problem and it was, it was a big deal and it was the end of the world and all this stuff. Well, 
you know, again, diagnostic mindset, etc. Kind of figured out what it was. It wasn't a big deal. It was actually, I mean, you could say it's the car's fault for relying too much on the phone, but it was in fact my phone's fault for miscommunicating somehow with the car. And I, I was able to isolate that by turning off Bluetooth on the phone, which promptly, uh, which promptly uh, provoked the car to respond by turning its screen on after I went back into ready mode again. Now, I, I did it repeatedly without turning Bluetooth off, and it still stayed black. So that's something that would alarm someone who didn't try you know, turning their Bluetooth off, I'm sure. But that was the next thing I thought of, because like, when you get in the car, and it's pretty nice. So you get in the car, you just hit... I mean, you don't have to hit anything. You just get in the car, and all of a sudden, everything pops up on... Uh, on Android Auto, you don't have to do anything. It's pretty nice. It's it's by default, and everything just appears on the screen. So you can actually keep your phone in your pocket. It does drain the battery pretty quickly, I think, um, if you've got like a not so efficient phone. But it uses, I believe, it's five gigahertz Wi-Fi to communicate with the vehicle. That's why you can't use the five gigahertz hotspot when you're using Android Auto. By the way, if you're curious, um, so it communicates over five gigahertz Wi-Fi. Um, to the screen, and everything just kind of pops up. So if you're in a hurry, you can literally just get in the car, leave your phone in your pocket, and everything within like probably 20 or 30 seconds usually will appear on the screen and be ready to go. Um, and the cool thing about Android Auto, if you haven't used it, even wireless Android Auto, in these vehicles is this talk button, which normally opens up Toyota, like this. Find me the nearest Starbucks. The closest Starbucks is Starbucks at 12975 Shelbyville Road. Would you like to go now? No, thanks. So, you know, navigation's all right. Um, I have started using Android Auto, though, already, which I feared I may, simply because it's so convenient having it pop up immediately. And also, and I don't know if this is going to work while I'm taking a video. It probably won't. If you hold it, it did work. Hey, Google, what's up? The app isn't installed. <laughs> Please try again once you've installed it. Yeah, I don't think Google uh, was expecting me to ask it what's up. But anyway, um, you can hold that and actually get Google Assistant within like a couple seconds of holding it. Or you can just say, hey, Google. Hey, Google. Okay, Google. Or actually, I can't do that because I'm taking a video with my phone. So never mind. I lied to you. Normally, that works perfectly. You can actually say, okay, Google, and then ask it queries. And it works just like if you were asking it in your you know, on your phone or in your house or whatever. It's pretty cool. So anyway, um, I really do like Android Auto. I think it's pretty fantastic. And I think the controls that Toyota built for this actually work really well. And I think the multi-information display is about as good as I could expect it to be. Um, I am very much in love with this vehicle so far. I got to tell you, I have driven, uh, what is it? 382 miles so far. A lot of highway driving, in fact, more than the usual. And I have that much gas left. I mean, look at that. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's two thirds of the displayed tank capacity. And my understanding is when you get to E, you've got like three gallons left. So what is that? Like 12 gallons or less? That's a little bit like 11 and a half gallons of actual displayed capacity. I think it's 14 and a half actual capacity. Uh, so in 11 and a half gallons, I've used that much of the percentage of that um, going 382 miles and just plugging in each night. So uh, if you're if you're on the list for this car, uh, stay on the list. It's worth it and enjoy it. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about. I'm getting Cross Climate 2 tires on Monday put on by Costco. Maybe I'll put a video together on those or something if people are interested. Um, give you my honest, my honest, unprofessional thoughts. So anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Um, sorry for the poor production quality and my, uh, and, and my very unprofessional nature for these reviews, but I hope that they've been helpful for somebody. Have a great day.